tensor cell is just a normal cell that's gone crazy. It's forgotten how to stop multiplying and it gets confused on some of its other biochemical interactions. Every cell is actually covered with a surface and it's not just a surface like a coat of paint. It's actually a dynamic surface that has a language written on the outside of it. So the way cells communicate is actually by a three-dimensional language on the outside of the cell. And it's all about shapes. We have the easiest system of modifying the surface of a cell that's ever existed. What code technology is, is a platform technology that allows a user to modify just the surface of a cell or a virus or an organism. So you can reprogram a cell of function or what it can do by painting onto its surface or putting onto its surface a new structure. We can label a cell, we can put it into an organism and we can actually watch where it goes to. We can also recover it back out of the organism and have a look at it and see what it says on the outside of its surface after it's actually been in the body for a period of time. There's virtually no technologies that can do that barcode. The previous methodologies for modifying cells and viruses were primarily genetic engineering. We can paint on things that are not even genetically normal. We can paint on fluorescent molecules that don't exist in nature or chemical things that don't exist in nature. The alternative method is chemical modification. Our construct doesn't do that. It actually leaves them completely normal. The cell molecules are composed of three parts. They have a lipid tail and then a spacer middle part and then a functional head group. So the functional part can be lots of different things from antigens to fluorescent molecules and the lipid tail is what sticks into the cells. The code construct itself, the function space of lipid, we draw an analogy of this to a flower. A functional head, a flower head that can be anything you could ever imagine, a spacer which holds it off a surface and brings in functionality, and an anchoring system in the roots. We got here by our relationship with AUT University. Okay, they were a uh, a very early player within when Code Biotech came onto the site. So unlike most universities where a company spins out of a university, we were what you call a spin-in. During the process, these are some of the PhD students. We've trained about 10 PhD students with absolute cutting-edge um, research. I mean, so cutting-edge that some of it's actually commercial products out there in the market. So my PhD, I'm looking at um, attaching FSL code molecules onto solid surfaces, mainly through inkjet printing them. So I'm just using a desktop printer and I've um, printed them onto lots of different surfaces. Core discovery in Katie's PhD was that we can create a whole new raft or paradigm within diagnostic assays. The entire result in a little card in front of you, just like you could have a pregnancy test. So one of the problems with 3D printing is you've got to get cells to stick to things and then they'll fuse together. So if you want to ultimately print an organ, you've got to print the cells into 3D. Now what we are suggesting you can do is you can make cells with co-constructs to work like Lego blocks. When you print them, they will self-assemble into 3D structures without the requirements for scaffolds. And what Katie has already been able to achieve is she can attach code-modified cells to scaffolds instantly. But this molecule has applications across an unbelievable breadth of technologies. It can be used in diagnostics, it can be used in therapeutics, it can be used in research and development. It can be used to inhibit toxins, viruses, 
Uh, we've actually inhibited the AIDS virus totally successfully. We see no reason why every research lab in the world at some stage could not be using a form of code technology.